A Killer Among Us, the story of Wade Wilson, written by Nancy Grace. 30-year-old Wade Wilson, the man the media dubbed the Deadpool Killer, instilled fear in the hearts of Cape Coral, Florida. His crimes, as heinous as they come, two innocent women, Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz, brutally murdered. Their only mistake? Crossing paths with this monster. Now Wilson sits in a cold cell, awaiting his fate, death. This is the story of how justice caught up with a killer and the impact his crimes have had on a community forever scarred. October Darkness, two lives cut short, casting a shadow over the city. It began in October 2019, a month that would forever be etched in the memories of many. Christine Melton, a vibrant soul known for her infectious laugh and warm heart, went out for a night with friends, unaware of the impending danger. She ended up at a local bar where a chance encounter with Wade Wilson, a man with a hidden darkness, would seal her fate. Lured into a false sense of security by his charm, Christine left the bar with Wilson, never to be seen alive again. The night air was filled with an eerie silence as she walked into the unknown. Days later, her lifeless body was discovered in her own home, a chilling reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places. The community was left in shock and mourning. Just days after Christine's murder, terror struck again, sending waves of fear through the city. Diane Ruiz, a beloved teacher known for her compassion and dedication to her students, vanished without a trace, leaving her students and colleagues in despair. Her car was later found abandoned, her purse missing, a sign that something was terribly wrong. Hope dwindled with each passing hour until the gruesome discovery of her body in a secluded area, confirming the worst fears. Diane, like Christine, had been brutally murdered, her life stolen by a man consumed by darkness. The community gathered to mourn, holding candles in a somber vigil, united in their grief and determination for justice. The evidence mounts building the case against Wade Wilson. As fear gripped Cape Coral, law enforcement worked tirelessly to track down the monster responsible for these horrific acts. The investigation quickly led them to Wade Wilson, a man with a disturbing past and a chilling lack of remorse. The evidence against him was overwhelming. DNA evidence from both crime scenes directly linked Wilson to the murders. Witnesses placed him with both victims in the hours leading up to their deaths. Surveillance footage captured him driving Diane Ruiz's car and disposing of evidence. The prosecution's case was airtight, leaving no doubt in the minds of the jury that Wade Wilson was a cold-blooded killer. Fighting for his life, the defense's strategy. Despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Wade Wilson maintained his innocence. His defense team fought tooth and nail to spare him from the death penalty, painting a picture of a deeply troubled individual. They argued that Wilson's actions stemmed from a childhood marred by abuse and neglect, leaving him with severe psychological scars. They presented expert witnesses who testified about the potential impact of Wilson's alleged brain damage, suggesting that he was incapable of controlling his impulses. Their plea for leniency, however, fell on deaf ears. The jury, having seen the evidence and heard the chilling details of the murders, remained unconvinced. After weeks of testimony and deliberation, the jury reached a verdict, guilty on all counts. Wade Wilson, the Deadpool killer, was found guilty of the murders of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz. The courtroom erupted in a mix of gasps and sobs as the weight of the verdict sank in. For the families of the victims, it was a long-awaited sense of justice, but one forever intertwined with the pain of their loss. After hearing emotional victim impact statements and carefully considering the arguments of both the prosecution and defense, I deliver the sentence death. Justice, though it could never truly heal the wounds inflicted by Wade Wilson, had been served. Tears and relief, victims' families respond. The courtroom was a sea of emotions, a place where grief and a semblance of closure intertwined. The families of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz, forever bound by the shared tragedy inflicted upon them, faced the man who stole their loved ones from them. 
Their eyes filled with a mix of sorrow and anger bore into the soul of Wade Wilson, the man responsible for their unimaginable pain. Tears streamed down their faces as they shared stories of the vibrant lives cut short, the gaping hole left in their hearts that could never be filled. Each memory recounted was a testament to the beautiful lives that were so cruelly taken away, leaving behind a void that words could scarcely describe. Christine's mother, her voice trembling with grief, spoke of her daughter's infectious laugh and her dreams of becoming a veterinarian. She painted a picture of a young woman full of life and ambition, whose future was stolen in an instant. Diane's husband, his voice thick with emotion, described his wife as a dedicated teacher who touched the lives of countless children. He spoke of her passion for education and her unwavering commitment to her students, a legacy that would live on in the hearts of those she taught. Their words, raw and powerful, echoed through the courtroom, a chilling reminder of the human cost of Wade Wilson's crimes. The testimonies served as a stark illustration of the far-reaching impact of his actions resonating deeply with everyone present. While nothing could bring back their loved ones, the families expressed a sense of relief that justice had been served. The verdict provided a measure of closure, a small step towards healing in the long journey ahead. The death sentence, though a small consolation, meant that Wade Wilson would never again be able to hurt another innocent soul. It was a solemn victory, a bittersweet end to a chapter filled with pain and loss, but also a testament to the resilience and strength of the human spirit. A past marred by violence, unmasking Wade Wilson. As the community grappled with the aftermath of the trial, attention turned to understanding the making of a monster. Who was Wade Wilson and what drove him to commit such horrific acts? The investigation into his past revealed a deeply disturbed individual with a long history of violence and a chilling fascination with white supremacy. Wilson's criminal record was extensive, littered with arrests for assault, battery, and theft. Disturbing tattoos, including a swastika prominently displayed on his face, pointed to his extremist beliefs. Investigators uncovered his ties to a local white supremacist group, raising concerns about the potential motivations behind his crimes. Life on death row, what awaits Wade Wilson? With the trial concluded and the sentence handed down, Wade Wilson began his new life as an inmate on Florida's death row at Union Correctional Institution. Gone were the days of freedom, replaced by a stark reality of confinement and isolation. His days would be spent in a small concrete cell under constant surveillance. His movements would be restricted, his interactions with others closely monitored. He would have limited access to recreational activities and contact with the outside world. His only solace in frequent visits from family members and legal counsel as he navigated the lengthy appeals process that lay ahead. Scars on a community. The lasting impact of the Deadpool killer. The events that unfolded left a deep and lasting impression on everyone involved, forever altering the fabric of the community. The case of Wade Wilson, the Deadpool killer, left an indelible mark on the Cape Coral community. His actions were not just a series of isolated incidents, but a series of events that shook the very core of the town. The brutal and senseless murders of Christine Melton and Diane Ruiz shattered the sense of peace and security, leaving residents grappling with fear and anxiety. The once serene neighbourhoods were now scenes of unimaginable horror and the community was left to pick up the pieces. The trial and subsequent sentencing provided a sense of closure, but the scars of Wilson's crimes ran deep. The courtroom was filled with emotional reactions as the community sought justice for the heinous acts committed. The community was left to confront the darkness that had visited their doorstep, to grapple with the knowledge that evil could lurk in the most unexpected places. Conversations about safety and vigilance became a common theme as residents sought to protect themselves and their loved ones. In the wake of the tragedy, a collective determination emerged to honor the memories of Christine and Diane. Candlelight vigils and memorials became a way for the community to come together, to mourn and to find strength in unity. Their families established scholarships in their names, ensuring that their legacies of kindness and compassion would live on. 
These scholarships became a beacon of hope, providing opportunities for young students to pursue their dreams and make a positive impact in the world. The community rallied together, implementing new safety measures and supporting initiatives aimed at preventing future tragedies. Neighbourhood watch programmes were strengthened and new security cameras were installed to keep a vigilant eye on the streets. The story of Wade Wilson serves as a chilling reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of vigilance. His mugshot became a symbol of the evil that had infiltrated their lives, a constant reminder of the need to stay alert and protect one another. While justice has been served, the pain of his crimes will continue to reverberate through the community for years to come.